Ready to go outside? That is all water. That's it, away, buddy. Uh, That's it. Yeah, everybody wants in. Why? <laughs> Working with teenagers. Good afternoon. We just went for a nice little winter stroll with our snowshoes and our rubber boots. It was a little challenging. Your pants get wet? Yeah, the back of the snow went out down my boot too. We usually uh, wear proper attire for snowshoeing, but we were like, oh, we'll just, we'll just go for a little tour when we go back to the cabin. Um, I've been working, I started this puzzle by myself last uh, weekend and apparently I need Jess because I'm not as good as her. But yeah, we're just taking the day off. I did help Carissa with chores this morning. I'm going to just help regardless until uh, this cold snaps over. I think by Wednesday, right? Yeah, well, like mid to end of next week is going to be wild. Yeah, they're calling for lots of snow tomorrow and Tuesday, so you'll be busy. So we're just taking a little bit of a break today. I had a nap this morning. I could not wake up. So I think that's my body telling me I need to have a little Sunday off. So yeah, I'm gonna do this Christmas puzzle, even though it's not Christmas, even though we haven't told our cabin that yet. I think the dogs are happy to be inside. All right, the barn is minus 1.2. So I'm assuming our milk lines are still okay. It's like the walls were leaking, so. I'm assuming that the barn thawed a bit today and my lambs are not at all interested. That's usually a good sign that everything's good. Oh, one, two, three. They are all good. Hello, hello. I think this is the week. These guys are gonna get weaned. Once and for all. The nanny gets to get put away somewhere warmer. Good morning, it is Monday, which means we're back to work, even though every morning's been like Groundhog Day. We just do the same thing. At least until this cold snap breaks, which I think is tonight. I think it's supposed to get warmer through the night and be zero tomorrow morning. Uh, Carissa just got here, so I'm gonna meet her out here. I'll just give her a hand with chores and then meet Mark for breakfast. He's gonna do the full on uh, yard clean out. It doesn't look too, too bad. The snow we got on the weekend's been pretty fluffy, so it shouldn't take him too long. But he said it'll probably take him most of the morning to get all the neighbors and everybody done. So I'm sort of doing a mental to-do list in my head. I might hoof trim my ewe lambs today if it warms up enough, but we'll see. Sandy's back is a little tender from the snowmobile running the other night. All right, chores are done. The barn is warming up nicely now. I think it's minus one, minus one and a half. We've been sort of waiting for our creep feed. We're all out just waiting for the trucker to get here. He's probably gonna be here shortly, but I think in the meantime, Mark cleared a path to my hay bales, which are in the field. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to get at them. And he said, go grab some, get them stockpiled for the market lambs. If we waited and the snow started melting, it'd be a mess and he wouldn't be able to get it moved. So that was, uh, that was some forward thinking of my hub. So I'm gonna take a couple minutes while I'm waiting for this feed to get here.
I did some reconfiguring on my planner, my bullet journal, and I had scheduled vaccinating my ewe lambs that are getting bred in March. I schedule it on Friday. I think that's the 26th, the 26th. But I've been sort of playing around with breeding dates. I should never do that because I always forget to write them down somewhere, but I have them written down everywhere for everyone that's gonna come at me, please don't come at me. Um, and I'm going to actually shift it a few days forward because we got something going on in March that I will fill you guys in sooner to the date. So that means today is the day they need vaccinated. This vaccine is 60 days prior to breeding. You give it to them. It's the chlamydia vaccination and then the booster at a month before you put in the rams. So today is that day to hit the eight weeks mark and then in four weeks we'll do this again. The trucker just called me said I'm on my way I've had issues. I'm like no worries. Uh, but in the meantime, I did have to put a little bit of barley in these feeders because what can happen is when my lambs run out of creep feed, uh, creep is just the feed they get supplemented, you know, off mum, like on their own. Anyway, it was ordered to come first thing this morning because uh, we knew we were going to run out. And um, yeah, we ran out like. 10 minutes ago so I'm like I'll just put in a pail of grain to get Limpus through he said I'm sorry I'll be there in half an hour so he's gonna be here soon anyway so I thought I'd just get this started and then um, hopefully it won't take too long I think there's 68 ewe lambs in that pen 68 so we should be good Okay, just an update on the chlamydia vaccine. So chlamydia has sort of been that ghost that entered the barn as soon as I got sheep. We've been vaccinating for it basically since my second year, maybe sheep farming. So what can happen is a couple weeks to a month, a couple weeks before lambing, you'll see you starting to miscarry lambs, abort lambs. And uh, back in the day we got them tested and chlamydia was the smoking gun all the time. So we've been vaccinating like crazy ever since. It's really helped on that. Now we've had stillborn since then or mis uh, miscarries or abortions, whatever you want to call it. Um, but they've been other things. There's a few, but Q fever has been the, the one that's sort of in the environment. That's a harder one to get rid of. Yeah, so chlamydia is something that uh, you just do. Why are you holding your leg out? Did your doggy bite you? Or paw. Okay, it's a two mil injection done now and in four weeks and I'll just scan their tags so they're entered in the computer system. You guys, you're all like overlapped.
Mark and I uh, went for a late afternoon rip while we still have snow. We're supposed to get snow today, tomorrow, and then I think it might be gone after that because we're in for rain and then like days over zero, which for work, wonderful. Snowmobiling, not so ideal. We've been into uh, roasting vegetables for supper. I'm a little obsessed with it, so this is my little medley. I have carrots, potatoes, beets, parsnips, squash. Now I have to season it and I usually leave that up to mark. But the one thing that we do use a lot of, and I actually have to restock because we're out of it, is Bearded Butcher Spices. And I actually am an affiliate for these guys. So my link to this stuff is in the description. It's always there. Um, but yeah, these guys have been amazing to work with. And uh, I am a terrible advertiser for them, but I'm trying to do a little bit better. We're out because we use it on everything. So yeah, I think Mark said we're gonna use a little bit of that. And that's Cajun paprika, smoked paprika. Uh, cayenne pepper, parsley, garlic, which I still have to get, and olive oil. I think I have leftover chicken, so I'm gonna put with some chicken. That is our winter veggies. today all right every day we wake up a little different it's early what is it 10 to 6 just finished my coffee and uh, I got an email this weekend and uh, I meant to share it yesterday was yesterday Monday yeah today's Tuesday the day got away from me and I forgot to share it anyway it was really sweet and Erica my niece is doing a great job sort of trying to organize my emails I haven't seen a lot of uh, personal emails from you guys just because of uh, everything was dumping into my inbox so I had 35,000 messages or like notifications on my email so it's down to 25 now she's done an amazing job I'm not gonna say this person's name just because I'm not like some of these things are pretty personal but I wanted to share it because and not as a flex at all because I wanted you guys to know that you know, my channel was never set out to be um, a how-to channel, how to be a sheep farmer, because like literally if you've, if, if you've watched from the very beginning, you would know that it's actually what not to do as a sheep farmer. So uh, the way I learn is by doing it and mostly failing it, but then learning from those failures and trying and trying and trying and then finally sort of doing it. Um, but this... Uh, this person messaged me. It's titled a pick me up. So I wasn't scared to read this one <laughs> Sandy I hope this email actually finds its way to you. I hope it does. It did. Thank you, Erica <laughs> I just wanted you to know that you're amazing inspiration My wife and I have been watching your YouTube for about three years now and last year we started our own flock We have about 20 sheep just a small commercial starter flock. We've learned so much from you Thank you for being honest and showing the bad with the good. It makes us feel like we're not failures so he sort of gets it. Now for the real reason I'm reaching out to you. I wanted to say thank you for giving me the confidence to do what I did this afternoon. When I got to the farm after work, I had a ewe down and in labor. I had no idea how long she'd been there, but she had two rear feet sticking out. Without thinking, I jumped in and pulled the lamb out. Everything went perfectly. I don't think I would have ever done this without watching your videos. We will be keeping this ewe lamb and be naming her Sandy. I hope this is fine with you. Just wanted you to know. So I'll put a little picture of the lamb, but it's a little black lamb and she's so cute. Oh, mama's beautiful too. Anyway, so I just, I wanted to share that message because this person sort of gets it. Like it was never, the channel was never meant to be like, do what I do because we all know there's a million different ways to do anything. And sheep farming is definitely one of those things. So that was a really nice thing to read. Um, and then of course I was sifting through some comments of my last video and I wanted to speak to this a little bit and um, it's more it's more of an internal in our farming profession and it's the reason I actually left Twitter during COVID really because I just think people became a little unhinged rightly so but I found in our industry um, people are really becoming a little polarized or just maybe not watching like words matter and uh the message i got was like 
something along the lines of, you know, us ranchers really basically don't like it when you grain farmers want more snow for like playing for snowmobiling. And it's like, we just went through a week of actual frozen hell here, uh, making sure water stayed thawed. I got nothing done that I wanted to do. And like for two hours, not even, an hour and a half, two hours, on a Saturday night, we decided to take out our snowmobiles that have literally just been collecting dust over the last few years. We decided to go for a rip. In saying that, Mark had said, I said, how were the trails? And he's like, they were garbage because there's not enough snow. And what he means by that is like, sometimes our associations open up trails and then because they're not all open, they get too much traffic in one little area and then the, the trails are garbage, they run out of, there wasn't really enough snow to start with. So that was what he was talking about more than us wishing for more snow. And even if we did wish for more snow, it's only for snowmobiling, it's not for the work. The work part sucks. And we're ranchers too, we're ranchers and grain farmers. And I just think we need to be a bit careful as a farmer sort of condemning another farmer. We need to remember that it's not just us in those comment sections. There's a lot of people that aren't farmers that are watching that. It doesn't matter what profession you're in, there's gonna be some really bad days and there's gonna be some really bad weather and it's not really a competition. We're all, we all work very hard. And I guess we're at the age now that we're like, if we can't take time to enjoy it as well, we're gonna really start to resent our jobs. And uh, we don't wanna get to that point. So I think, um, I just wanted to speak to that comment because I think it's very easy to sit in front of a keyboard and just sort of have a cheeky comment or response. It might not have, it might not have been meant maliciously, but you don't know how other people are taking that. Anyway, that's how my morning started out. Sometimes I just should not read the comment section at 5.30 in the morning. Sort of doesn't start the day out right. All right, I've either dressed way too warm or uh, just right. I have no idea what minus one feels like anymore. I forget, it's been a while. It's been nine days. What do you think, ladies? Is it time? Ready to go outside? I don't feel balmy to you guys. Oh, I already worked up a sweat this morning. How much will there be? 40. 30. Yeah, I'd say 30. 30. Oh, well, how many did you have last time? I think we had 30, 32. 32. Yeah, you're right. I think 32 or 33. And it's been three weeks. So they don't, and yeah. then it's too many to fight off. That's it, yeah, everybody locked in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you think I have to go in again? Oh, my God. Hey. Let's wait for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the perfect time to show you guys the time that I absolutely do not like this barn and it's when it becomes a rainforest. So check this out. That is all fog. 
That is all water from the melted snow, or the snow that's melting. It's not nice. Uh, we're right at the temp where the curtains are gonna start opening. I've got the north actually shut off because we've got a big snow bank on the bottom of that curtain and I don't want the curtain breaking. The south isn't as bad, so it's starting to open a little bit here. But, oh my, everything is just wet. But that's what happens when it's like been so, so cold, everything sort of freezes up and it's actually quite nice when it's frozen because it dries up everything. But when it gets like this, these big swings, everything becomes really really wet and then we're doing a lot of bedding and it feels like it feels like it's for nothing because it's wet an hour or two after you bed so that's a one downfall of this style barn is this rainforest effect so we just put up with this for a bit i'm just really glad i did not build my pens right beside these because that would be inside my pens and right now we have the mangers sort of acting as a dam which is good it is already 2:30. Uh, my barn, like my barn is underwater. Everything is melting. Uh, before lunch, I did set up to start hoof trimming my little ewe lambs that we did the vaccination with on Monday. And it's already 2.30, so I'm never gonna get all 68, 67, 68 of them done today. Um, so what I might do is just mark them with spray paint when I'm done. And then whatever doesn't get done today, I'll either do tomorrow after I'm done shipping lambs or maybe Thursday. Show you what I did here, my little cheat. So uh, when the walls decide to melt, we put straw on the ground. Now they won't think that those puddles are black holes. Okay, onward. So I did try to get new blades for my uh, my Infaco, um, but I think we ran into some logistics. I don't think they shipped to Canada because I think there's some distributors in Canada, so I have to figure out who they are. If you're a distributor of Infaco in Canada, let me know. I need a couple new sets of blades. I'd like to buy them ASAP because this is the first of many hooves that I have to trim over the next like four weeks. So that's what you guys are in for. I promise I'll try not to bore you. Usually it's more interesting to see the uh, the use behind the ones that are getting done because they do some fun stuff. We squeeze them just so they don't move, so they don't start moving around and hurting me and hurting them. So you lambs with no wool, we're gonna have to get them pretty tight. As you possibly, probably possibly can. So that's as tight. There, that's as tight as this one will go. So let's see what they look like. So this is their first hook trim. So they're probably not gonna be the prettiest, but hopefully it'll be soft. This is the oh. So these guys will be done now, and they'll be done again after their scan. Before they have to We'll see how bad they get, and we'll go from there. Sometimes I get impatient and I do them again.
Working with teenagers.